Up to this point, we've created a pure data metronome that utilizes multiple abstractions and is incorporated into our Xcode project via LibPD. We've also designed a simple user interface using Storyboard. All that's left to create is a controller for our pure data patch. This controller will take the form of a custom class called PD Metronome that I've created ahead of time. And here you can see that PD Metronome is basically an Objective C class that inherits from NS Object. There are two other things that I'll point out. One is that I've already imported LiPD into this project, and you can see it over here at the left. And as well, I've copied the PD files for this patch into the project and have grouped them in a folder called Patches. I'm using the same approach that I implemented in my series Learning LiPD for iOS, which was published in May 2015. In case you're wondering how to import LiPD into an Xcode project or how to create a custom class to handle interaction between LiPD and iOS, I suggest that you go and check out that series and come back when you feel ready to continue. Now, working within pdmetronome.h, I'll add some import statements for some classes that I'll need. The first will be UI kit, which will be used with an alert dialog later. And the second is PD Dispatcher, and this is key to interacting with the PD patch. Next, I'll create some public properties. The first two properties are NSU integers called BPM and subdivisions. And the third property is a bool that is simply called on. Following the iOS convention for creating Boolean properties, I'll add some special notation that creates a custom getter function by adding the word is to this property. Finally, we'll create a custom initializer called init with BPM and subdivisions, and it'll have two arguments, BPM as the first argument, which is an NSU integer, and subdivisions, which also is an NSU integer. Now we'll head to the implementation file and we'll implement this custom initializer. We'll start with some boilerplate code that initializes self. And then we'll create a generic pointer called patch that will serve as the reference to the opened PD file. Within the self conditional, we'll open the PD file metronome.pd and assign its contents to this generic patch variable. As a precaution, we'll test to make sure the patch variable has contents. And if it doesn't, we'll create an alert dialog that tells us that the patch isn't found. Assuming that the patch has been loaded, we'll set the BPM and subdivision properties of the instance. We're going to go ahead and implement the default initializer so that it calls init with BPM with a default BPM and subdivisions value. The goal of this class is to provide control for the metronome patch. There are lots of ways to do this. In my opinion, the simplest and most elegant way for us to facilitate control of the PD patch is to modify the setters of each of the instance properties. So we'll go to the top of the file and we'll first modify the BPM setter. And really the only thing that we're doing here is we're manually setting the backing variable that's created behind the scenes when we create the class property. This backing variable has an underscore before it, so underscore BPM. We'll set that equal to the argument of the setter, which is BPM. More importantly, however, we're going to send that value to the PD patch by using the send float to receiver method of the PD base class. The receiver is the name of the receive in PD and it is case sensitive. So here at sign and then within quotations, BPM. We're going to repeat this for the subdivisions property and the on property. We've now created a class that provides elegant and simple control for our PD patch. It's time to complete the iOS metronome app by creating an instance of this app in the view controller. 